So the United Arab Emirates signed a peace deal with Israel. This was brokered by the U.S., right? You had Donald Trump coming in and pretending to be a peacemaker. And once again, they called this, ah, oh, it's the peace deal of the century, which is what they were trying to sell us a few months ago in, in January, right? With the Jared Kushner peace plan, which is essentially just giving away Palestinian land to the Israelis. Well, with this one, here's the compromise. So in exchange for peace, allegedly, in exchange for peace between the Emirates, the UAE, and Israel, Israel would not annex any Palestinian land. Oh, how generous. <laughs> yeah, well, turn, turns out that's a lie, okay? That, that's a complete lie, because during the press conference, they even asked Netanyahu, does that mean there's no annexation whatsoever? And he said, no, 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 that's, that's still on the table, meaning <laughs> they're not going to do anything except postpone it. They're just postponing their illegal annexation. And I, I, I need you to understand something, because in Western media, they won't break this down to you the way Arabs see it, okay? First of all, not only were Palestinians not involved in this so-called peace deal, they were completely excluded, once again, but on top of it, by signing this deal, the Emirates have sold out the Palestinians because they've acknowledged and granted legitimacy to the military occupation of Palestine and recognized Israel as a state, which it is not. And they have accepted all of the previous annexation, all of the previous land that has been stolen since 1948, since 1967. They have accepted all of the murder and, and genocide that has been committed since 1948 up until now. Now, this should come as no surprise. We know since a while that the Emirates have been engaged in many economic and, and in business and scientific dealings and cooperation with Israel. We knew this was coming. A few months ago, I reported on how they were sending aid to the Palestinians. So, so what the Emiratis were doing was they were sending a plane to Ben Gurion Airport in Israel and saying, oh, this is for the Palestinians. And then they sent a second plane. And each time the Palestinians told them, no, we refuse your aid. Because not only are, are you putting it in the hands of the enemy, but you aren't even recognizing us as a state because you're delivering it via our occupiers. And everybody saw through this. I, I told you at the time what this is. They don't care about actually giving aid to the Palestinians. What they were trying to do was normalize relations with them. And that's essentially what they've done now. So that was preparation for this. Okay, that's what it was. This is the third ever peace treaty between Israel and an Arab state. Includes embassies, direct flights, the agreement, quote-unquote, suspends annexation. But Netanyahu says, I will never give up on our right to our land. So as, as I just told you, this isn't benefiting Palestinians in any way. It's a cover. It's an insult. Okay? And this is exactly what Israel wants, because what Israel wants the most, especially from Arab states, is legitimacy. The majority of Arab countries do not recognize Israel as a country. You cannot go or visit an Arab country with an Israeli passport. If you have been to Israel, you've, your passport's stamped. You can also not enter the majority of Arab countries. And so Israel craves legitimacy. They want to be recognized as a state. But they're not a state. They're military occupation. They are illegally occupying Palestine. Egypt depends on aid from the U.S., right? They have the largest population in the Arab world. They have mouths to feed. If they try, if they try, to stand up to Israel the way Abdel Nasser did, the U.S. will crap all over them. The same thing for Jordan. So they've been put on a leash. The Emiratis, okay, to them, they're not interested in supporting the Palestinian cause. They never have been. To them, they see Hamas as an issue. They don't like that Hamas is being supported by Iran. And frankly, they're just selfish. This is the case for all of the Khalij, all of the Gulf states. Same for uh, Qatar, for Saudi Arabia. Just like they, they cooperated to bomb Yemen in this coalition, right? Using American-made weapons. Just like they've screwed over Yemen, they're screwing over the Palestinians now. And 
I mean, this, this is a stab in the back. It really is, man. This is a stab in the back. Instead of helping Palestinians, instead of standing up for them, they do this crap. <laughs> wow. Once again, I mean, disappointed, but not surprised. And not only did Netanyahu say that this is not going to stop annexation, but the same day, a few hours later after they announced this deal, they're back to bombing Gaza. They're back to bombing Gaza. The same day. Unbelievable. They, they can't stop killing Palestinians for one day. All the Palestinian factions, including Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, issued official statements denouncing the UAE-Israel agreement. Called it a stab in the back. It's exactly what it is, man. This is an absolute betrayal, make no mistake. And the Emirates benefit in many ways from this. This is from Reuters. So they said that Israel-UAE deal could open up U.S. weapon sales to the Gulf Kingdom. Wow. By the way, you do remember that Israel, the Mossad, they carried out an assassination. This was in 2010, if I recall correctly. They sent about 27 agents to, to kill uh, a senior member of Hamas. And they succeeded and got away with it, scot free. I guess now at least, they can conduct assassinations in, in Abu Dhabi without having to forge passports, right? Australia, the UK, Germany, they can rest assured that Israel won't be falsifying passports in Abu Dhabi, at least in the Emirates, at least <laughs> now they can just use their regular ones. They can just show up with their Israeli passports and go in. <laughs> How nice. How nice. This is what I posted on Twitter. I said the Gulf monarchies are U.S. puppets and the enemies of Arabs. In June, the UAE sent quote-unquote aid to the Palestinians via Israel, which Palestinians refused. As predicted, this was another cover to ultimately normalize ties with the Zionist occupation. They are traitors to Palestine. And furthermore, conveniently, you won't see an Arab spring in these repressive theocracies because the U.S. makes sure not to accidentally deliver democracy in places that are sympathetic to their interests. Is it, isn't that weird? The Gulf monarchies, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, they, they didn't get an Arab Spring. Isn't that weird? And they're far more repressive. I mean, just in general, Syria is one of the most liberal societies in the Middle East, easily. But, I mean, you compare to, to Saudi Arabia, oh my God. Jared Kushner was doing an interview today and he's like, oh, look how we've gotten these Saudis to play ball with us. And they're, they're shifting and aligning with U.S. policy. Women can drive. Women can drive now in Saudi Arabia. And I'm listening to them like, do you, do you listen to yourself? Women can drive now, finally. Like, look who you're sponsoring. Look who you're working with. And then you dare to call places like Libya and Syria repressive? No, they're not interested in women's rights or democracy or freedom of speech or any of that. They'll jump in bed with anybody to further their interests, which is why they work with Saudi Arabia, with the Emirates, and with these repressive theocracies. You won't see an Arab Spring there, conveniently. The U.S. and Israel help to keep these monarchs in power. Do you understand? So, this is, once again, this news, this deal is disgusting. It's not surprising, but it's still disgusting. You will never, you will never see Syria do some shit like that. Never. Once again, just like we saw with this Jared Kushner peace plan, the United States is engaging in imperialism and white supremacy where they assume this dominant role where they think that they have permission to give away Palestinian land. It's not your land to give away. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to the Zionist occupation. It's not your decision. And they exclude Palestinians. They call it a peace plan. They call it a diplomatic breakthrough. Yet no Palestinians were involved. How is that a diplomatic breakthrough or a diplomatic undertaking when you exclude one of the parties? That's called oppression, what you're doing. This is no different from the French and the British carving up the Middle East. And you're dictating to them what is to become of their fate and trying to pass that off and market it and sell it as some kind of diplomatic breakthrough. That is a slap in the face. That is an insult. This is a stab in the back. This is a complete, absolute betrayal on behalf of these Gulf monarchies who formed this coalition with Saudi Arabia and Kuwait to bomb Yemen. 
to commit genocide in Yemen using UK and US weapons, but also now to screw the Palestinians. And they've been doing this for a while. So like I said, when they sent that plane full of medical supplies a few months ago, it was a cover-up. And the Palestinians saw right through it. And everybody in the Arab world saw right through it. They didn't actually care about delivering aid to the Palestinians. They just wanted to normalize ties with Israel. So we knew that this was coming. And Jared Kushner himself, he said that it's just a question of time before Saudi Arabia does it too. I, oh, yeah. Oh, best bet. Bahrain, Qatar, they will all establish diplomatic ties with Israel very soon. Make no mistake, it's coming. But you see, that's the difference. That's the difference between the sellouts and the people that are still fighting for the Palestinian cause, for the Arab cause. You will never see Lebanon, you will never see Syria do that kind of shit. Never. Forget about it. If Bashar al-Assad or any, any Syrian president signed a peace deal with, with Israel, they would be gone in 24 hours. People would, the whole country would be in the streets the next day. He would be gone. Because that's how much of an affront this is. That's how much of a betrayal and a stab in the back this is. Not just to Palestinians, but to all Arabs. And that's the difference between opportunists and sellouts and people who have fucking principles and do not tolerate oppression and genocide and theft and military occupation. An official from, from the Emirates, it's one of their ambassadors, look what he's saying on Twitter. I'm going to translate this for you very roughly. He's saying essentially that he hopes that the security officials inside the Emirates are going to keep close tabs and follow up on people posting dissentful comments online about this recent uh, peace deal between the Emirates and Israel because he says that they're a threat to our security. So if you disagree with what the Emirates just did, you're a threat to their security. So, I mean, I answered him in Arabic. I said, which, which means that I swear to God, the only threat to the security of the Arab world is you, you traitor. That's exactly what I told him because that's facts. That's facts. When you're collaborating with the enemy, you are the enemy now. You're on their side. How could you sell out the Palestinians like that? That's, that's unreal. How could you recognize and give legitimacy to this military occupation and call them a state when Palestinians don't have a state yet? How could you possibly do that? Just from a human rights point of view, never mind from where's this Arab solidarity? Ain't there, man.